Um, the first song that I'm going to sing is a traditional, we call it a traditional birthday song in Mexico, or a lot of the Latin countries, and it's called Las Mañanitas, or uh, the morning song. It's what they usually sing for somebody's birthday, or for Mother's Day. It's a big song for Mother's Day, too. When the mariachis go to the house, they sing to the window, and of course, the mom or the daughter or the wife or whoever comes out and, oh, you know, sing me a song. Yeah. Ay, que lindo. la mañana en que vengo a saludarte venimos todos con gusto y placer a felicitarte el día en que tú naciste nacieron todas las La pilar del bautismo cantaron los señores. Ya viene amaneciendo y a la luz del día nos dio. Levántate de mañana, mira que ya amaneció. the grito. It's kind of like the Mexican way of saying, yeehaw! So. <laughs> de las estrellas del cielo tengo que bajar de dos una para saludarte y otra para decirte adiós Quisiera ser un San Juan, quisiera ser un San Pedro, para venirte a cantar con la música del cielo. Ya viene amaneciendo y a la luz del día nos dio. Thank you very much. We could do, where's he go? He left. Oh, that's which track. You could do number three, please. The next song I'm going to sing is what we call, it's um, kind of like a corrido type of song, which means it's kind of like a folk song. It's very popular in Mexico and a lot of Latin American countries. And the song is called El Rey by Jose Alfredo Jimenez. So in English, it means the king. So this is called El Rey. No, you'll go ahead and sing. Dirás que no me quisiste, pero vas a estar muy triste y así te vas a quedar. Con dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero y mi palabra es la ley. Una piel 
enseñó que mi destino era rodar y rodar. Rodar y rodar, rodar y rodar. Después me dijo un arriero que no hay que llegar primero, pero hay que saber llegar. Con dinero y sin dinero hago siempre lo que quiero. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Let's go with number 10. The next song is, is what we call a popurri. A popurri is kind of like what it sounds in English, the word pop, popurri. It's just a mixture of different songs put into one. This one I call popurri de boleros, which is boleros are uh, romantic songs. And there's three songs in this one. This one, well, The first one is called Cien Años or 100 Years by Pedro Infante, who's a very famous Mexican singer. Uh, you would... Equivalent him, somebody to like Frank Sinatra, that kind of, of style, the way he would sing. The next song after that is called En Mi Viejo San Juan, which was sung by Javier Solis, who was another uh, crooner, as you would say, kind of like the Dean Martin type of person. Um, and he sings a song uh, in, in, in remembrance or in, in honor of San Juan Puerto Rico. Uh, and the third song is by a local, or not local, but a... a um, a newer bolero ranchero singer by the name of Pepe Aguilar, and which he's a singer from uh, Mexico also. His dad was very famous, named Antonio Aguilar, um, but Pepe is known for singing a lot of the bolero type songs, more of the romantic type songs. And a lot of people in the, in the Mexican community or even the Hispanic community, when they look at me dressed up like this, they, they say I look a little bit like that singer. So a lot of people seem like, hey, Pepe, and it's like, oh, it's Gabe, you know, <laughs> Gabriel. But it's, it's an honor to be known like that, you know, that people know me when they see me like that. It's kind of cool, so. Um, but here's what's called Boleros Rancheros. a mi lado con gran indiferencia tus ojos ni siquiera voltearon hacia mí te vi sin que me viera y hablé sin que me oyera Todo mi amargura se hago dentro de mí. Me duele hasta la vida saber que me olvidaste. Pensar que ni desprecio merezca yo de ti. Sin embargo, sigue unida mi existencia y si vivo cien años, cien años pienso en ti. Mi viejo San Juan, cuántos tiempos por qué en mis noches de infancia, mi primera ilusión y mis cuitas de amor son recuerdos del alma. Una tarde me fui a esa extraña nación, pues lo quiso el destino. Mi corazón se quedó frente al mar en mi viejo San Juan. Adiós, 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 Borinque querida, tierra de mi amor. Adiós, adiós, 
adiós, mi diosa del mar, mi reina del palmar, me voy. A buscar mi querer, a soñar otra vez en mi viejo San Juan. Siempre he dicho una cosa, queridos amigos. Lo más hermoso del mundo, lo que Dios ha criado más bonito que anda en esta tierra, son ustedes, mis queridísimas y benditas mujeres. Me estoy acobardando. Lo ha notado, eso no es muy bueno para mí. Si quiero retenerla entre mis brazos, será mejor que no me vea sufrir. Estoy estacionado en los fracasos y hoy voy a remediar la situación. En exceso siempre salgo dañado Por mujeres como tú, amo Hay hombres como yo Que se pueden morir por dignidad Mordiendo el corazón Por mujeres como tú hay hombres como yo que se pueden perder en el algo por una vez. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Well, again, good evening and welcome to the 2010 Cesar e. Chavez uh, Hispanic Excellence Scholarship Gala. Gabriel, uh, before Gabriel leaves, let's give this wonderful, wonderful artist another round of applause. Very, very excited to have you. For those of you who may not be familiar with the type of music that Gabriel sings, it's very traditional to Mexico. Um, and, and I think those of us that are from Mexico will, will say that he is an exceptional, exceptional uh, a representation of the beautiful music that comes from this country. So we're very, very proud to have him here sharing in this delightful and, and cultural activity that, that we as, as Mexicanos, as Mexicans, treasure. Um, and it's so, it always gives me goosebumps just to hear this music. Um, away from our native country of, of Mexico. Um, but today is a night that we celebrate all of Latin American cultures and what unites us, I think it's the, the efforts or the, the achievements that um, six young students have put forth uh, this year and, and are now gonna be recognized for those, for, for those um, hardworking and um, very ambitious goals that they have. Um, again, let me introduce myself. I am Dante Villarreal. I am the Regional Director for the Michigan Small Business and Technology Development Center at Grant Valley State University. I'm very honored to be here with you tonight. También quiero darle la bienvenida a todos los padres que están aquí esta noche. Realmente hoy es una noche para ustedes, para ustedes y sus hijos y hijas. Estamos aquí para celebrar no solo los, los logros que han tenido sus, sus hijos sus, o sus hijas, pero también el futuro que ellos van a brindarnos a nosotros. Y como padres, les damos las gracias por estar apoyando a sus hijos y teniendo bastante éxito en sus vidas y en las vidas de, de ellos. Muchas gracias por estar aquí.
at this time, I would also like to recognize any of our elected officials that may be here tonight. If you're an elected official, could you please stand up? Thank you. We thank you and for your commitment to serve. Um, I would also like to recognize any uh, candidates that we may have here tonight. Wow. <laughs> To all the candidates, in this case, I think it's, it's Lupe, uh, we wish you a very, very fruitful campaign. And um, do know that your efforts and, and your, your strengths to become or to take this challenge um, is very inspiring to all of us. Thank you very much, Lupe. Um, at this time, I would like to have Dr. Stephen Ender, president of Grand Rapids Community College. Oh. <laughs> And Lupe Ramos Montigny, chair of the Cesare Chavez, uh, or the committee to honor Cesare Chavez, to come to the podium. I am obviously not Stephen Ender, <laughs> but I am here on his behalf. He's um, very sorry he couldn't join us today, um, but he wishes that he was here. I'm pretty sure he would have enjoyed the music a lot. And I have a little message from him, but before that, I just want. Um, to ask uh, our board president, uh, Ms. Margo Anderson, to please stand up and please be recognized. <laughs> Another of our trustees, uh, Rick Berberg. Um, we're very proud of them. They are very, very supportive of us at the college, of the students, and they're here to celebrate with you your achievements. Um, I'd like to know how many of you really understand nothing of Spanish? Just show of hands. Okay, so you're gonna be lost, very, very lost for the next few minutes, okay? <laughs> Para el resto de ustedes. Mi nombre es Hilda Heli y yo soy la vicepresidenta de Asuntos Académicos y Estudiantiles aquí en Grand Rapids Community College. Yo soy de Puerto Rico y es un placer para mí estar en esta comunidad. Y es un placer para mí en un día como hoy compartir con ustedes estos logros. Ustedes están empezando un camino ahora que tiene muchísimo por delante. Um, y a veces es difícil, pero ¿verdad, Lupe, que se puede? Sí, se puede. Eh, seguro que se puede. Eh, cuenten con nosotros. Estamos aquí para ayudarles y para servirles. Okay. Now to um, Dr. Ender remarks, we, um, this is a great evening to celebrate our collective history and the future of the Hispanic st students with GRCC. Our mission at GRCC is student success. This event tonight ensures that the path is wide and accessible for Hispanic students. Six bright young individuals are being recognized tonight for the Cesare Chavez Hispanic Excellence Scholarship. We are so proud to partner with all of you who have helped pave the way for these students to be able to reach their dreams. From pre-med, to pre-elementary, to psychology, to computers, to child development, each of the chosen fields will be brighter, stronger, because of the commitment our scholarship winners have brought to their journey. We are so proud to honor the six students during our six annual event. We thank you for your commitment as future leaders. And to all of you who have taken time out of your schedules to honor our students, the Hispanic Heritage Month and the values of Cesar Chavez, thank you. Thank you for highlighting the excellent work that has brought the availability of much needed resources to the table to ensure student success. When students succeed, succeed our communities, our families and our cultures become stronger, which is, by the way, excellent. Enjoy the night. Our, our photographer will, for the evening will be Dino Perez, and we have a seat for you in the front so you can get a lot of good pictures, Dino. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, uh, my name is Lupe Ramos Montini and I serve as the chairperson for the committee to honor Cesar E. Chavez. And in behalf of our committee, we welcome you here tonight. Les damos una bien 
gran bienvenida a esta función. We invite you to celebrate the legacy and the life of Cesar Chavez, a strong and humble servant that served in not only the United States, but throughout the world in the work that he did. And so we're very proud that we can have the determination that he had, and here is evidence. Six students are going to be receiving $1,000 scholarships from the Committee to Honor Cesar Chavez. <laughs> now, this wouldn't be possible without our sponsors that you will hear from in a few minutes. And the sponsors are sitting right here in the front because with the, their sponsorships, with their support, with their loyalty and their trust, we are able to give awards to students tonight. And we are very, very proud of that. We will continue working. As you uh, remember, last year we celebrated 10 years of existence, and we have done many great things in the community and, and for students, for families, and for our community at large. Uh, so I, we welcome you to here tonight. We hope that you stay with us. And remember, those tickets that were given to you, there are three nice prizes that you will get uh, at the end of the program. So again, I thank you for being here. I thank the committee for making this possible. And enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Lupe. Thank you, Vice President, for the remarks. Very much appreciated. They are definitely an inspiration to us all. Tonight, we celebrate the life and legacy of Cesar e. Chavez, um, someone who meant so much to many of us um, who have a farm worker background, farm worker lifestyle that, that we lived, and how appropriate that we celebrate this, this scholarship uh, gala in the, in the autumn as many farm workers <laughs> maybe 20 miles away are harvesting crops for us and and we salute them we salute them yes so to give us a little perspective or or little comments or remarks on cesar e. chavez and his movement in the farm worker uh, community we will ask uh, mercedes tuji another member of the cesar e. chavez committee to give us her remarks And the one thing that felt great when I was by Mr. Chavez was that we were almost the same height. <laughs> so at that time, it was a great feeling. I first met Cesar when we were in Oxnard, California. And uh, we had a group of people who had gathered at this um, farm who were struggling to make, uh, to collect all the lettuce that was on the ground, and they refused to give toilets to the workers. Cesar came by and said, we're going to go pick, we're going to help them out, but we're also going to make a stand that at the end of the day, everything we pick, we will hold to it and demand that toilets are brought to us so we can continue working. There were no yellings, there was no hoorays, but a quiet man who got things accomplished. The next day, there were six porta potties for the people to use them. And he advanced like that slowly. He went as far as getting professors together and say, we need a university that deals with agriculture. And they began one in Fresno. And very few people know that, but he was the main force to get people to understand the need of many of our workers to get educated so they can make progress and they can make a future, not only for themselves, but also for this country. And that he had accomplished. After having met him, in that, in that manner, I had come to Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we worked together with Aquinas College, 
um, Davenport, and Davenport was a very small college at that time, Grand Valley, and they said, who do we bring? And it was um, a lawyer, uh, Rick Hessler, who said, Cesar Chavez. And we all pulled our resources together and brought Cesar Chavez to town. I had a schedule, a room at Grand Valley that was not as large as it should have been because the night came and we had a hallway of students and teachers and, and professors and deans waiting to hear Cesar. And there I was looking at many of my um, coworkers saying, what do we do next? Fortunately, our president, uh, Dr. Lover, said, get a room and let's get going. And we did get a, a much larger room where Cesar was able to address the crowd that was anxiously awaiting for him. Cesar, a very humble man, he never boasted of the power he had. He never went out and said, I am Cesar Chavez. No. He always said, we are the farm workers, and we need to work together for a better tomorrow. We need to think that tomorrow is going to bring us a better day. He was so positive about, about everything he did. And I remember that we tried to take him out to dinner, and he said, no, I'm sorry, but I'm fasting. Because grapes at that point are being sprayed with everything that was, was so harmful to the children and to the families. And it was really a shame, and we were ashamed, to go out to eat when we knew our hero was staying behind because he was fasting for a better world, for a better tomorrow. And we all learned a lesson that night that, you know, you can really walk miles and see farther ahead by being humble and walking the right path. And Cesar did that for us. And I thank Lupe Ramos Montini and the committee who brought awareness of Cesar to Grand Rapids, Michigan. Now we have Granville Avenue that had been Granville for so many years, now it's Cesar Chavez. We have the school Cesar Chavez, thanks to their effort because they have followed the path of Cesar Chavez. And for the students, he said, students must always have initiative. They should not be mere imitators. They must learn to think and act for themselves, and they must be free to soar to the highest capacity that they have been given. All of you who are here present and receiving the scholarships have followed that. You were not imitators. You did not go with a group. You chose to study, you chose to work, so you could soar even higher. And to some of you, we will be calling my doctor, my dean, my president. So to you, we thank you, and we always want you to remember that it's the hard work of the people bef before us that made us succeed. It is on their shoulders that we stand, and we're able to be here standing and talking to you freely and saying, si sí se puede, because here at Community College, si sí se puede, because here at Grand Rapids, Michigan, si sí se puede, and we're all going to be successful, and we're going to be much better for that. Thank you. Thank you, Merce thank you, Mercedes, for these very inspiring words. And thank you for being part of the effort that brought Cesar Chavez here to, to Grand Rapids, to Grand Valley State University. I was uh, still in high school, and I did have an opportunity to attend that, that evening that he came to Grand Valley. And um, I, I, I'm very grateful, even though I didn't meet you officially till years after, um, but without individuals like you, like Lupe, like many others in this room, a lot of us would not really understand what, what his cause was and, and not be fortunate enough to have met this great hero. Um, Cesar this did pass away less than 20 days after he visited Grand Valley, so it was really a, a, a blessing, I think, for many of us here in West Michigan to have him here as one of his last stops. But now, on a lighter note, um, it is my pleasure to introduce Grupo Tarasco, 
a probably the greatest dance group here in, in the Midwest. <laughs> under, un, under the direction of uh, Josie Cedillo Guillen, Grupo Tarasco will demonstrate three traditional Mexican songs for us this evening. Grupo Tarasco, you have the floor. Good evening, everyone. Oh, you guys are so beautiful. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. Like he said, my name is, they call me Miss Josie, Josie Cedillo Guillen, and um, today I am bringing to you Grupo Tarasco. Our first number will be called La Bruja. La Bruja is a dance from Veracruz, and um, La Bruja is a dance uh, that is dance. She's um, Nereida, isn't she beautiful? Nereida um, is a student at Ferris State, and um, she'll be dancing with candles on top of her head, and um, they stay on top of her head, believe it or not. <laughs> and um, it comes from uh, Veracruz. And um, uh, the story behind, behind that is um, kind of funny. And uh, they say that uh, she's supposed to keep it there because it kind of um, represents the, um, the scariness and the funniness that the, um, the lady is supposed to kind of keep her hidden from her mom. And then she kind of pulls her underneath the um, kind of the bed. And it's kind of like, in, in, um, we say from the kukui. The kukui is kind of... Uh, the the scary man so the boogeyman there you go thank you omar thank you thank you so without further ado we're going to dance uh, nereida will be dancing la bruja so let's give nereida a round of applause okay la bruja okay dj
thank you, Nereida. That was um, La Bruja. And now we have the other group, and um, they will be dancing um, a polka from um, Tijuana. No te rajes, Tijuana. A little bit of a um, country western. Too bad we don't have a little bit of the hard floor so you could hear the, the sounding of, the, of their feet. But, okay, we're ready, DJ. Put your hands together, guys. Hey, hey, hey! Nancy, we have Yaneli, we have Marco, we have Nayeli, we have Luis, Diana, Jordan, Jackie. And we have um, Nereida. Thank you, it, is, it has been a pleasure. And we have Ms. Josie. This is Grupo Tarasco. Thank you, Ms. Ramos, as always. And thank you to the um, Committee of Cesar Chavez. Thank you for inviting Grupo Tarasco. And thank you, Dante. I did not pay him to say that um, warm welcome, and uh, thank you, I'll pay you later. Josie, on behalf of the Committee to Honor Cesar Chavez, we want to thank you for the many, many years you've devoted to this, this wonderful, wonderful group. And, and to see the youth that are here dancing and knowing that in a few years they'll be sitting there receiving their scholarships and then being out there in the audience later on writing the checks for the, for the support of the committee and the, <laughs> and the university and the college and so on, that is great. So thank you very much for the countless hours and countless years you've devoted to, to this beautiful, beautiful thing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And hold on, hold on. Okay. And after looking at the beautiful but very skillful act that they have, it's no surprise that she never let me in her group to dance. <laughs> hey, but you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. I need, Thank you. I need you. I need I'll you. stick to the horses. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We're coming out to your, to your uh, place. Please, please. Just let me know when. <laughs> At this time, I think we will get to probably the most exciting part of the evening, and that is to recognize our scholarship recipients. Yep. Okay. 
as soon as I find my place in uh, Lupus script here. Let, let me um, let me transition into my uh, lack of uh, of uh, location here by saying that uh, that the committee to honor Cesare Chavez has been a very very strong committee, um, and you can see that how alive it is and how uh, how strong of a committee it is because it takes many people to to make this happen. And tonight we have a uh, very special guest here that will uh, well you know I'll let Lupe introduce them. Thank you, Duncan. Thank you. Uh, you know, I, I am really excited because I'm running for office. Every day, it's a new day. Every day, I say, si se puede. Every day, it's new adventures, new people that you meet. Now, right now, I would like everyone in the committee to honor Cesare Chavez to please stand. Everybody that's in the committee to honor C. Chavez, please stand. Now take a look at these people, because these are the people that make it work. Now we have, we have bankers, we have VPs, we have uh, nurses, we have board members, we have business people, we, ha we have it. And so we're very, very proud to be able to represent the committee to honor Cesar Chavez tonight. This morning, uh, I received different calls early in the morning. One of them, and luckily I was already up and going and, and ready to go and make a new day. And Carol called me and she said, I have been trying to get a hold of you because I have a very special message to give to you. And I said, well, what's the message? You know, I am always excited about new things. And she said, well, tomorrow we're leaving to California and we're going to go join the Chavez family in their family reunion. I said, what? She said, yes, I am related to the Chavez family. So how fortunate are we tonight to have Carol Schmidt in our presence with her family and she's going to tell you how she is connected to the Cesar E. Chavez family. Give her a big round of applause, please. Thank you. Thank you, Lupe. I'd like to introduce my husband, Paul, and my son, Nicholas Schmidt, who's a Spanish immersion student at Rockford. He has, um, a, we've given him a good gift of being bilingual. Um, we are very proud to be here to honor the life and legacy of Cesar A. Chavez. My maternal grandmother and Cesar were first cousins. They were born and raised in Yuma, where I was born and raised. Um, we're leaving tomorrow, as Lupe said, for our first Chavez family reunion, get together with everybody. It is in Keene, California, at our foundation. I will be taking back pictures, the program, and Lupe will be sending me with lots of information to send back to the Chavez family is very proud and supportive of the uh, accomplishments of the committee to honor Cesar A. Chavez. I want to also thank Lupe for this opportunity to say thank you and to keep up the good work. I'd also like to uh, recognize your accomplishments to the students and congratulations and keep up the good work. And thank you all for being here. Si se puede. And now we have arrived to the special moment where we recognize our students. To assist us in this presentation, I would like to add, ask our scholarship, or excuse me, our sponsorship a guest here tonight to come up and join us at the awards table. We have Ruth Goddard with AT&T, Pat Lonergan with Fifth Third Bank, and Joanne Hawk from State Farm Insurance.
Ruth, please join us. Okay, so I get to go first. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce the first one, first recipient, Melissa Arvizu. Melissa's dad is from Guanajuato, Mexico, and her mom is from Texas. Her grandfather was a migrant worker in California, Texas, and Michigan in the 50s and 60s. She graduated from Fenville High School in 2002. She is currently studying computer applications and hopes to transfer in the future. She has two daughters, age eight and six, who keep her quite busy, but she still managed a 3.7 GPA. And she is here tonight with her boyfriend, Joel. Congratulations. I'd just like to thank everybody who helped make this possible, and it's a great honor. And the second recipient tonight is Febe Lidia Gruyon. Febe Lidia is from the Dominican Republic. She is one of 15 siblings. She graduated from high school in 1987 and came to the United States in 1975. 87, 1987. It's wrong on my paper. She is currently taking English as a second language class. Her husband, Juan, and two of her three children are also enrolled at GRCC. Besides a busy family life, she works at the Salvation Army, and she has a 3.8 GPA. <laughs> she is here tonight with her husband, Juan, and her son, Joelvi. Yes, I want to say thank you, everyone that made this possible. Um, all my teacher and Fatima too. Thank you very much. And I'm uh, Pat Lonergan from Fifth Third Bank, and you know certainly pleased to be here and uh, be part of this uh, wonderful event, and have the honor of introducing the next two scholarship recipients. Uh, the first of those is uh, Julia Medina. Julia's father is from Cuba. She graduated from Granville High School in uh, 2008. Julia is a first-generation college student who plans to major in special education at Grand Valley State, where she has already been accepted for next fall. Uh, she works part-time and volunteers working with autistic children at the Children's Museum here in town. And all that work uh, hasn't kept her from achieving a 3.9 GPA. Good for you. And, uh, and Julia is here tonight with her uh, mother, Mary, and her father, Fidel. Actually, Julia isn't here this evening. She was unable to attend, but we are here to accept this award, and we would like to thank the committee. Thank you. Uh, I didn't have a speech uh, ready, but I just want to say thanks. Th thank you so much for this award. Appreciate it. I'm, I'm very proud of my daughter, too. Absolutely.
The uh, next scholarship recipient is uh, Adriana Ocampo. Uh, Adriana was uh, born and raised in Morelos, Mexico. She is the second of six children. Born, uh, both her grandfather and her father worked as migrant workers in California. Uh, Adriana graduated from high school in Mexico in 1989 and came to the United States in 1990. Uh, she started at Grand Rapids Community College taking English as a second language, uh, classes in 2008. She's married, has two children that are 10 and 12. Her major is child development, which is probably going to come in very handy. Uh, and she has achieved a 3.9 grade point also. So good for you. And uh, Adriana is here tonight with her husband, Raphael, and her sons, Christian and Adrian. Quiero agradecer al comité de César Chávez por otorgarme este, esta beca. Es un gran honor para mí. Muchas gracias. Good evening. My name is Joanne Hawk, and I am with State Farm Insurance. It is my privilege and honor on behalf of State Farm Insurance to introduce our last two scholarship recipients. If I mispronounce any names, I'm apologizing up front. <laughs> um, the next recipient is Marisa Sanchez Lagunas. <laughs> Marisa was born in Guanajuato, Mexico. Her father was a migrant worker in California and Utah. She came to the United States in 2005 speaking little English, just like me. <laughs> in 2009, she graduated from Wyoming Park High School. She'd like to transfer to Grand Valley State to become an elementary school teacher. Her current grade point average is a 3.8. She is here tonight with her mother, Angelita, and her father, Salvador. Congratulations. I just want to say thank you. Muchas gracias. Our last recipient tonight is Mario Ibarra. Mario graduated from Kelloggsville High School in 2009. He is a first generation college student who would like to become a doctor. So we're going to call him Dr. Ibarra, okay? Um, he would like to transfer to Michigan State University to major in biology and chemistry and in the future attend Johns Hopkins Medical School. He's got really big aspirations. <laughs> Um, he is currently enrolled in a rigorous set of courses, tutors math, psychology, and biology, and still maintains a 4.0 grade point average. He is here tonight with his mother, Lori, and his grandmother, Arlene. Congratulations. I would just like to say it's such an honor to receive this award, and thank you to everyone who made it possible. Thank you. Thank you. 
at this time, if we can have all of the recipients, please join us up here on stage. And, and the sponsors can stay up here as well. They can stay up here for a group picture. Please, please join us up here. And I think a very, very well-deserved standing ovation for these great, great students that are here tonight. We are very proud of their progress and wish them continued success. I don't know about you folks, but if they say that our youth are our future, I think the future looks pretty bright. So once again, one quick hand up to them. At this time, I would like to ask Dr. Andy Bowen, Associate VP for Grand Rapids Community College, to join us at the podium. I just want to add uh, my congratulations to our scholarship recipients. Um, you've worked hard, and we know that you'll continue to work hard, and we look forward to the day when you look back at Grand Rapids Community College and proudly say, I'm a GRCC alum. I also want to say thank you to our sponsors because of your support for us that you've provided us over the years. We have well over $100,000 in the scholarship fund and our goal is to reach $200,000 with the help of wonderful sponsors and other donors throughout the community. So with that, thank you very much. Dante? One, one thing that uh, we have to add to the program, we usually have the big check and the big check this year is $10,000 that we're going to donate to the foundation. Now, as Andy said, we have like 100000 and 110000 Okay. So we are, our, our goal is 200000 Once we reach 200000 then forever we will give 10 $1,000 scholarships. So we have a ways to go, but with your support and your trust in what we're doing, we will get there. We got to 100,000, so we are going to get to the 200,000 goal. Now, so tonight we are going to donate $10,000 to the foundation and get closer to our goal. So I want to thank Andy and uh, President Ender, Provost, and all the people that help us in the college. There's many of them. Chris Arnold, uh, Fatima Nieves. Fatima Nieves was the chair of the scholarship committee. She helped select all the recipients using the criteria used by the college. That's a very important thing for you to know. We give six $1,000 scholarships. Three, if you notice, are from families who were farm workers at one time. And as was said at the beginning, I was a farm worker when I came to this state. And many of us that are in the committee did the same. So we're very, very proud that we can serve in this capacity and be able to pass the torch to the next group of students. So como dijo Cesar, si se puede, there's nothing impossible if we want to do it. And our goal is what? 200,000. Okay, so again, thank you. Thank you. 
you. Thank you. Thank you. And now for the drawing. I believe the jar is down here. We do need a volunteer to come up and help draw a... Mm, there you go. Did everybody put a ticket in the jar, in the bowl? Does anybody not not have a ticket? Everybody has a ticket. For, th show me a ticket. for the 200... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a ticket. I need, <laughs> I need a ticket. T tell them who put the yeah. three things mm -hmm. in. Let me again uh, make you aware of the, of the prizes for the drawings tonight. Very, very um, excited that one of, the one of the prizes is a painting by our locally known artist, Eric Pichardo, uh, titled Sembradores. Beautiful painting that uh, Lupe will be, will be showing to us. It means the uh, harvesters, the, that, those who plant for a future harvest. The second prize is a, wow, probably my favorite prize, is a gift certificate to the f exciting, fabulous restaurant here at GRCC, The Heritage. For four people. If you only, whoever wins this, if you only have three people to go, I'd be happy to support you in this, uh, in this, in this achievement. And the last one is a beautiful, and I, excuse my pronunciation, Oreforce, Oreforce, crystal candle holder that is beautiful. I'm sure it's not as tasty as the uh, heritage food, but it is beautiful. Lights up. And we will start with a candle holder. Everybody has a ticket. Get your ticket out. Get your ticket out. Okay. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a winner if you have seven, two, nine, eight, <laughs> four. Who's still in it? Who's still in it? Four. Oh, I have it. Here it is. <laughs> Uh, I ha I have it too. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> We're ready. The suspense. And this is the heritage. Okay, we're going to change it up a little here. Seven. Three. Zero, six, <laughs> six, oh. who's still in it? Seven, seven, three, zero, six, six, seven, must be present to win. Go again, go again, okay, okay. Notice we support one another, huh? <laughs> okay, here we go. Seven, two, nueve, nine, eight, two, seven. Oh, back there? Okay, here we go. Seven two nine eight two seven. Okay, okay. Uh, 
You're like a... Apúrate, Dante. Seven. Uh, pay attention. Here it goes. Seven, three, zero, three, seven, and four. Ah! Here we go. And how, appro how appropriate for the president of Grand Rapids Public Schools to win this. And again, if you only have three guests. We're you. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys heard her. Okay. And for the last one. You guys ready? First number is four. Oh. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> First number is seven. Do we do it in Spanish? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Primer numero, siete. Dos. Oh. Nueve. Ocho. Okay, ocho. <laughs> Who else? Cuatro. And the last one is nueve. <laughs> wow. Seven, two, nine, eight, four, nine. Okay. Remember, this is for sembradores. L let me share this with you that I could only afford a print. I have that in my house, a print of that. That is a beautiful, beautiful painting. Seven, three, okay, zero, who else? Six, seven, three, no, <laughs> two, <laughs> seven, three, Zero, six, seven, two. Okay, wow. You, no, 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 no. You, sh you should have let that lady go first, and you would have had the, been the ticket holder. <laughs> oh, no. Seven, two, nine, eight, three, two plus two is four. <laughs> Four, seven, two, nine, eight, three, four. I got it! Oh! <laughs> Congratulations to all the uh, the recipients of the of the uh, uh, the drawing. Quickly, want to make a a quick announcement before we conclude with a final portion. Omar, with the final portion of the program, Omar, please, please take note. Please take note of the save the dates at the end of the program. We hope to see you at these events. Thank you for coming. If you are interested in participating in the Cesar e. Chavez and, and the committee to honor Cesar e. Chavez, please contact our fearless leader, Lupe. The committee is always welcoming new talent. And now, this is my favorite part of the evening. Again, as a tradition of the celebration of the life and legacy of Cesar y Chavez, we will hold hands and sing the theme song, the, excuse me, the theme song for the United Farm Workers de Colores, led by the students and parents of Holy Name of Jesus Catholic School. If everybody can kind of maybe make their way down and along the edges so we can hold hands collectively. No picking where you go, Luis.